Hi guys, JR Can Reviews here and welcome to my second B&M 2019 review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the first of the three packs, which is the two Doctor set, featuring Perry, an Androgum second Doctor, and Group Marshall Stike. Taking a look at the packaging, it is very different to the Dalek sets, and I do think quite stylish, in a navy blue and bright white theme. We get a window box which displays the figures inside very, very well, a limited edition sticker to say that these things aren't going to be around forever and the title of the set. The left side of the packaging features vector artwork of the TARDIS, while the right side of the packaging features photos of the figures inside. The back of the packaging is not as impressive as it is for the Dalek packs, we do not get any information on the story, and we do get quite low quality images of the figures inside, but at least it does say what the figures are in a little bubble. And here we have Perry, the Androgum Second Doctor, and Stike out of their packaging. So firstly let's take a look at the newest figure of the set, which is Stike. Now Stike, I must say, off the bat just looks absolutely fantastic, without a doubt possibly the best Santaran that we have been given so far in the classic range. His head sculpt is fully brand new, which caught us all by surprise as we figured that if this was going to happen they'd probably use the Invasion of Time sculpt, but no, they went to the effort of making a brand new sculpt for him, which looks absolutely stellar. This new sculpt perfectly demonstrates his iconically bold facial structure, which starts around his eyebrows and finishes all the way down near his chin, which has always been a striking look to Santaran for me and has always been one of my favourites ever since I first saw the two Doctors when I was nine. His blonde facial hair is very well painted with his little goatee and his eyebrows. I don't think his eyebrows were this heavy in the programme as it is quite hard to see whether on production photos or in the quite grainy DVD. His ears are very well defined on each side of his face and on the back of his head we have lovely wrinkles and folds which gives this Santaran a realistic look and adds a lot of personality to him. Even on his forehead we see these little wrinkles and above his eyes these little dents which really sets this Santaran off among any other figure that we do have. Overall for the head sculpt, this is my favourite Santaran head that we have so far. Usually with the Santarans, I always feel that there's something either a bit off with the sculpt or with the paint apps that just doesn't make them look completely right and usually prompts me to display them with the helmet on. However, with Stag, he will always be displayed with his helmet off. The body of this figure completely reuses the Lynx body, so the back of his probic vent isn't the big wide probic vent from the episode, however that doesn't really bother me. His black flight suit is very well demonstrated with a slight silver wash over it just to give it an extra bit of shine which I really do appreciate. Unlike other Sontarans, Stike does not have any elbow pads or knee pads. Now this is because that he did have quite thin ones in the show that were very different compared to say the previous Sontarans. So on this they've just painted them on which I think looks a lot better in person. I was a bit confused when I saw the photos however now I have it in hand I think it looks fab. I'm not too sure about the bronze streaks as the elbow pads did have a bronze tinge to them however I feel they're a bit too bold as demonstrated here but again it's not really too much to worry about as it does add a unique look to the Santaran on the shelf. I also feel that leaving out these pads really makes the Santaran look taller compared to the rest. It makes him look a bit more lean as Stike was a very tall Santaran unlike his partner Val. In the show to demonstrate Stike's high rank, he has white tassels which are on his shoulders, but personally I'm quite glad they left it off as it does open for more army building opportunities say if you want to get another one and make that Val with him. And his communicator language translator thing is painted in the two doctors colours to get as accurate as they can. Obviously if you wanted a completely accurate two doctors communicator you would have to do additional re-sculpting as it just had a central knob on the top silver section rather than these buttons and I'm pretty sure we can all agree it's probably not worth the effort. Stike retains his holster from Lynx which is confusing and we'll get onto that in a second. By his communicator, Stike's belt is only painted three quarters of the way, just to demonstrate the shorter belts that they had in the episode. And the bottom of Stike's boots are painted bronze. I'm unsure if the Santarans wore shoes and shin guards rather than boots, or boots with painted foot sections as shown here. When Stike's going down the ladder into the cellar, it seems to indicate the latter, but other shots seem to suggest differently. Either way, the DVD is sadly not in great quality, so it's hard to tell, but it's nice to see that attention to detail on this figure. Stank only comes with one new accessory and that is his helmet, sporting a brand new painted on insignia rather than a sculpted on version that should be accurate to the episode in its two second appearance. But this is a budget set and personally I don't really see the point in re-sculpting the entire helmet when we can just get this and paint it on I think it looks equally as good. The helmet itself is painted in an accurate bright silver and with really defined eyes painting them black which I think really brings them out and contrasts very well with the silver adding depth to the helmet. 
And yeah, that's Stag's only accessory. As we mentioned before, he still retains his holster from Lynx. So why they couldn't give him like a little small gun, I really don't understand. They went ahead and gave the other Sontaran set with Lynx a gun, and that both contained a new head sculpt in Harry Sullivan, but also contained two helmets as well. Yes, this is the new head sculpt of the set, and yes, it does come with an accessory, but surely it should come with a weapon as well, seeing as the other two did? With a little bit of force, because this is very tight, the helmet does fit on Steyr. However, one problem is his nose. It is a little bit big, so unfortunately it causes some paint rub every time that you put the helmet on and off. But yeah, that's Stike, an excellent figure of this set, and honestly one of my favourite Sontarans that I own in my collection. Definitely the best head sculpts and paint apps, and one of the best looks that we have. Next up, we're going to talk about Perry, and boy, is she long. I'm sorry, but right off the bat, you can tell that her arms are extraordinarily long. Now, when you first get it, you don't really notice it, but you do start to notice it when you lift the arms up, and yeah, that's a big problem. The reason they did this is that in The Two Doctors, she has a short sleeve shirt, and this reuses the Planet of Fire Perry, which has long sleeves. So they've given her longer forearms to try and match. However, it really doesn't work, and I feel they just should have gave her her normal hands. Now we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at the figure. As usual with the Perry figs, it sports a very well likeness to Nicola Bryant. This figure features a pink headband with multicolored dots, which came up very clean, and I'm very pleased with how this looks. Her jacket, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. The paint apps really demonstrate that oily-like effect that this jacket did have in the program, which I imagine is really hard to get right, and I absolutely think they nailed it here. It's got a pink base with lots of gold and shiny greens on top of it. Her shorts are done in their standard Vengeance on Varos colours, a bright baby blue with her keyring and red belt. I'm not really quite sure how we feel about the pants continuing above the belt to give an effect of a crop top. It does look a little bit odd to me when you look it up close. Her legs continue the tan colour, and unfortunately because they're a bit spindly, one of her legs is very slightly warped, which makes this figure even harder to stand than it already is. And a reason for that is because of the heels, but the heels are done very nicely in this sandy colour, which is probably accurate to the story. I've never really been able to tell, so I'll just take character options as a word for it. And other than that, there's not really much to say about the Perry figure, other than the long arm. I just think this figure looks really good. It's an accurate presentation of her outfit in the two Doctors, and it looks great amongst the other figures, so I'm not much to complain about here, other than those arms. She looks like a monster. And now onto the Androgram second Doctor. Now, I just have to talk honestly about this figure, because it's always been a bit of a joke for years about, oh, one day we'll get an Androgram second Doctor, and I think it's a great idea and concept. However, in practicality, you do start to see its flaws. And one of its main flaws is that the second Doctor head sculpt, I don't think it accommodates the Androgram look. And I really couldn't put my finger on it. I was searching and searching for a reason why I just didn't quite get this figure too well. And then I thought about what I think of the Androgram second Doctor to be, and it is smiles and top hat. Obviously, they're not going to go to the effort of like retooling like a top hat to put on Troughton. Like, yeah, it's a lovely figure to have and a lovely variant to have on the AT shelf, but I just can't help but think this is the weakest of the set and possibly one of the weakest of the range. I much would have preferred if this just was a standard second Doctor. But enough of my pedantic rambling, they actually did put a lot of effort into this figure to try and get accurate to the Androgram Second Doctor, so let's take a look at it. First of all, the hair on this release is a lot more grey, accurately portraying Troughton's hair in this episode since he refused to get it dyed for some reason. Along with the obvious orange eyebrows, Troughton has a very nice red outline along his eyes, just to permeate sort of that stress that his body is going under during the Androgram form. And with the forehead, I don't blame them for missing out the warts, as there's not really enough space to accurately portray them. After turning into an androgram, the second Doctor changed his shirt from his whitish grey one to a blue one. The pattern on his trousers is different to the original release, these being more smaller squares, which I do want to say is more accurate, and finally featuring his brown boots. So overall, I see an attempt with this figure, but at least for me, I just don't really feel it does get across the Androgram Second Doctor. However, it is nice that they did actually go to the thought of it, and I'm pretty sure that lots of people are going to get enjoyment out of this figure, as it is quite a nice little quirky one. 
And that is it for my review of the two Doctors set. Honestly, a great set to own, especially for 20 quid, when you're getting a brand new Santaran figure in stank with a brand new head sculpt and exclusive paint detail, especially on the helmet. You get a very interesting and quirky Androgum second Doctor variant, and a Perry in a great outfit. I can very much imagine them doing revision sets like they did for the last sets, uh, but probably around February, and I can imagine them fixing Perry as she has got quite a negative reaction, unfortunately. Thank you guys very much for watching my review and I will be continuing B&M set reviews so please do look out for them. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe especially if you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Goodbye.